a choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a rock. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a, a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very Expanding reality. Well, how did you feel about it early before we get into it on the net? Your fart or Roseanne Barr? <laughs> yes. I was yes. I was in favor of both. We'll just put it that way. No, I listen. Listen, I remember Roseanne from back when she was, you know, when she was when she had the biggest show in America. Yeah. You know, and 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 what she has become now. Uh, sort. Of, I don't know what happened along that process. I don't know if Hollywood woke her up to something, or if people close to her did. But she's got, you know, she's one of those people that's like, you know, like when you wake up in the morning, you're sort of groggy and you're kind of you're like, I'm technically awake, but I'm still kind of, you know, working on things. That's kind of how I feel about Roseanne. She's technically awake to a lot of it, but she's still working on quite a few things because she's not, you know, because she because she's like, we got to get Trump in there. We got to do it. You know, so it's like it's like, well. I'm glad you're aware of the Hollywood component. That's great. You should be. I mean, you were there. She's the one. They're all a bunch of witches. You know, she's screaming. They're all a bunch of lesbian witches. And Steve Poikinen's texting me going, I'm cutting this. I'm using this part as a soundbite. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> lesbian yeah. witches. But so it's like, on the one hand, it's like, great. You know, understanding parts of this, but but still also kind of stopping short in the fact that if we're, if we're talking about, if we're talking about, once Trump gets in there, then everything will be fixed. We've got a problem. That's that's just not gonna work. You know what I mean? Like that is a disconnection from 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 it. So I on the one hand, I'm glad she's she's in of some form of awakening, but she's like like where we all are when when we start this process, which is we know just enough to be dangerous and um and there's a lot to there's a lot more going on. So I welcome her to the party as I do anybody that's on this journey. We're all on this journey, right? I welcome her to uh, to the awakening and the unveiling of what's really going on. Um, but it's a it's a never ending journey, right? There's I don't know that there's a finish line to this. And so so you know if you're if you're at the phase of your journey where Trump is going to come in on a white horse and save everybody, just know that it doesn't end with this. You're going to get to a point where you would go. Oh, oh, wait a second. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind about the Trump on the white horse thing. I shouldn't have said that. That's not going to happen, right? So, I, you know, so, but she's got a powerful voice. I mean, but she comes off as crazy. Like she comes off as she she may be. She may very well be like certifiably crazy, but she's 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 not unaware of what's going on she's just she just doesn't know the full picture of it so it was fun to watch her come on she called mike bender a a jew hater he's like i'm jewish you know like i mean it was the whole thing was it was like it was a comedy show i just and i was i just sat there with my with my microphone muted just laughing at the whole thing it's like oh my god this is this is fantastic so shout out to ricky for the uh uh, actually shout out to mel k for that one because mel mel hooked that up she brought uh Kathy O'Brien and Roseanne Barr and Mel K. And we, and we of course joked at the end about like, you, you guys are talking about tackling witches. We've got the three of you ladies in here. You know what I mean? And they're like, there's been some, she, you know, Mel K is like, I must confess we, there's been some cackling between all of us when they're all in a room together. So it, it, it was a trip, man. I mean, to, to, to think if someone had told me in the mid nineties that I would be doing a podcast First of all, what is that? But later in in my life, that Roseanne Barr would be on there, and and Mel K sent her my octopus book, and she's like, "Oh my god, I read your book. It's really good. You must have a really smart mom." I was like, <laughs> "Thank you." 
And on behalf Do of you? my mom, I appreciate it. You know, it was a weird compliment. It yeah. Was complimenting my mom of all people. I was like, I said, I sent it to my mom. I'm like, Roseanne thinks you're smart. She's like, okay. That's a comedic thing though. I can't compliment you directly. They have to give you a shot as they love on you, you know, because they themselves can't take these altruistic compliments. We know a bunch of comedians, you know, Eric Hollerbach. I mean, he's a good buddy of both of ours. Love that dude. And he was just on the show recently. We had an awesome time sitting down and uh, just love him. His heart is so warm. You know, there's uh, another dude, Owen Hunt, that we're talking to out in Georgia. He's just an amazing guy. Uh, just these guys are just real heartfelt and very emotional, which is incredible. They're just tapped into something really, really deep. And like I said, just got a strong, powerful, booming, loud uh, voice, man, from our childhood and shit. Some of us, you know, so it's it's an interesting paradox, man. But it's fascinating you got the opportunity to talk to her. And I'm going to talk to you more about it, but I'm going to introduce us here at this point. This is a beautiful intro. But people that have tuned in that have just gotten through and they're just saying, what is going on here? Well, let's explain it. Charlie Robinson is our guest uh, today for a very special recording of Expanding Reality. We have our live audience our membership hangout here, hanging out, and we're grateful for them. We're gonna do the vibe and A after this, but this conversation right here is also being accompanied by an artist. This guy you see down here just scribbling. Um, this incredibly beautiful piece of work uh, forming before our eyes is by a young man named Hughie, and his work will be found uh, down in the show description as well as the Octopus of Global Control and all the ways to find Charlie Robinson. But wanted to point this out real quick for the uh, audio only audience that the video version of this one is where it's at. Uh, not only do you get to see Charlie and all his glory, your background's banging, by the way. We're going to talk about your upgrade. But uh, the art going on here is for all of our kinetic learners out here and just folks that say, you know what, this is going to be a really cool way to consume content in a really unique way. I, this is not my idea. This idea came from Dave Scott of Spaced Out Radio. I was on a. Um, show with him and Darcy Weir. Darcy Weir did a, a documentary that's out on Amazon called uh, NASA's, shit, Secret Space UFOs, NASA's First Missions. And uh, he asked me to uh, read a few things in it and I, I had a part in it and Richard Dolan's in that thing or whatever. So we did this media tour and among the media tours was this Dave Scott Spaced Out Radio. This legendary, you know, amazing dude, Dave Scott. And he had this dude there in a fourth box along Darcy, uh, Dave and I, in a fourth box here that he was watercoloring some doodle that he did. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? So I was blown away by it, the whole conversation. I finally pointed out and he told me what they were doing. And I was just blown away by the uh, neurological implications of this, just being such a kinetic learner myself, being able to sit here and doodle while listening to you absorbing it all. You know, it's this, you'll see, um, who's another guy that's like that? Richard Brand will do this. He's just like doodling while his guests are talking to him. And then he comes up with some brilliant shit. That's because we're listening to you, right? But what this does is affords the audience, uh, the visual visual audience here, and again, our kinetic learners, shout out, uh, something to take a look at while we're having this incredible conversation. Plus, it's uh, not shit, dude. Hughie is amazing. And again, we'll be linked below. He's part of our creative expansion series. He's printed in one of our journals here. So just wanted to shout out the community love on this and how we're bringing everything together and how amazing and special this is. And to thank all of you for being here, all of you for listening and watching, and Charlie for being the guest, and Hughie for dabbling along with us dude this is great it is great and i thought that and thanks for inviting us i think i think it's a it's a really amazing idea and it reminded me of um i'm about two weeks away from going to anarchapulco again anarchapulco the largest anarchist conference in the world that happens in february in acapulco mexico and last year when uh i uh i was i presented in on day one and then you get done with that and you go you've got the rest of the week to just kind of do whatever one of the things that they did that was cool was they had people uh on two different sides of the stage facing towards the stage that were painting all day they were just painting while people were doing their presentations i was watching because i was sitting behind one of the artists painting i was just tripping out just watching like how the detail and the you know, cause that's like magic to me. I don't have those skills. I don't, I, maybe I do, maybe they're latent. I don't know, but I don't, I don't, I'm not aware that I, if, if I have those skills, they're not aware to, I'm not aware of them at this current moment in my life. Maybe later they will be, I'm not trying to close the door on that. But when I see people that are artistic in that way, it is like watching magic, you know, it and is. it's, and it, it's gotta be what a, what a, what an amazing gift that is to be able to just transform a blank canvas into something unreal. So um, I, I think it's a great idea. Of course you can't. Of course you're doing this. 
<laughs> of course you're doing this. I mean, you know, it's a little odd, but cool. And, uh, and no one else is really thinking of it. Like I get these books in the mail I get these, but they're all from you. And I'm yeah. like, of course, of course, of course you're doing, it. of course you're the one doing these, these killer books. So, so, um, it's kind of on brand for you. So I'm happy to be a part of it. And this, this ought to be, this ought to be a lot of fun. Dude, it already is, man. And thank you for that. Absolutely, dude. It's ridiculous as fuck. That's our publishing house. Ridiculously original, ridiculous. So, I mean, it, it goes along. It's par for the course. We're here to expand the fuck out of your reality. And um, we're as advertised. So, undersold, I believe. Uh, so, Charlie, uh, along with all of your awesomeness, I'm reading here, just, you know, you're an author and a speaker. All the ways, again, guys, find him located down below. Octopus of Global Control, which you sent me. I don't know why I don't have it in my hands. I'll get it for the vibe and A. Um, and then uh, the Controlled Demolition of the American Empire. And that was co authored. And we're going to talk about it. But what I'm hearing here is a theme Octopus of Global Control, the Controlled Demolition. So, do we want to talk about your books or the possible control issues you have, um, you know, that we can expose here. If you want, this is a safe place, you know? Yeah. Where was it in your childhood that somebody took control away from you? (laughs) Um, I I don't know. There's a, there definitely is a theme uh, running through the books. There's also a formatting theme that runs through the books. They're all written in eight parts as well. So I, um, not that anyone would really notice, they they probably would notice it with the, but uh, the controlled demolition, it was sort of the same theme when, when I talked so I wrote that with Jeff Berwick and Jeff and I had this conversation in uh oh God, it must have been like 2018 I think and um and and I was on his show to promote the octopus book and we got done recording he he said uh to me it's all coming down man and I was like what like what what are you talking about he's like you know like the economy and I was like oh oh that you know like you know, and, and he just kind of threw that out there and I wasn't really sure what he was talking about. But then he said, "What? Well, like, uh, would you want to work on a book together? And I said, yeah, what do you what are you thinking? And he said, well, I'll send you some ideas. And he sent me some ideas and I took a look at them. But, man, I couldn't get it out of out of my head when he said it's all coming down you know, in my head. It's like like a like a controlled demolition. So I read his notes and I said I, I, I and they were good notes, but I sent back and I, I said, what if we did it like this? What if we made the comparison to sort of like b- between the way tech, the way demolitions experts take down actual buildings? I spent 10 years in Las Vegas. You you see when they take the casinos down, it's a big, you know, they turn it into a show. Of course, they've, it's all rigged with detonators and they've, they've pre-weakened the buildings in advance. They've, um, you know, identified the support columns. They've rigged the detonators. They've cleared everybody out they push down the plunger and then they clear the debris afterwards i said what if we made the comparison the way you would take down an actual building to the way you would take down the american empire and we could do it in these eight sections and i lay out the eight sections i just all this work i put all this shit together send it over to him i get a one sentence answer back from jeff he goes i like your idea better and i was like (laughs) okay good and that started it and so i started on the book in costa rica And because I was, I thought, well, let's, you know, let me just get myself in a place where I can sort of start with, you know, get a fresh start and come at this. However, I guess that in, in that regard, that is my art art, I suppose in, in, I don't have the physical like drawing or painting or anything like that, but uh, how are we going to, how are we going to build this thing and how are we going to assemble this? And so when we started on that project, I did it the same way I did the octopus book, which was I, bu- I built the octopus book the way just piece by piece. I didn't start on page one and end on page 540. I did. I had 50 different word documents going with all different, you know, one would be central banking and one would be 9-11. One would be, uh, you know, Afghanistan war or whatever. And I would work on on one, and then I'd and it, when I felt like it, you know, if if there was some, if I was inspired to write something banking related that day, I'd read an article about banks. I was all fired up, pissed off about banking, which is th- at least three days a week. I so I'd start, I'd work on just on that one, and when I got it done, then it, you know, I'd kind of finalize it, and it would be done. Then at the end, what I would do is I would uh, go to my kitchen dining room, my dining room table, clear everything off, 
and I would write sticky notes, all 50 of those those different topics. And then I would have eight headers across the top, which were the tentacles of the octopus. And I'd put those out there. And then I would go through the 50 sticky notes and I would try to figure, I'd put them in an order. Like this one is definitely financial. All the banking stuff's definitely going to go in financial, but what order is it going to go in? And so I would, I'd, you know, I'd have all these sticky notes laid out and I'd go, man, really this one should go there and this one should move here. And I would lay it all out visually so that I could see the flow on my dining room table and I could see which, which ones were going to lead into each, you know, and you got to kind of, in my head, I've got to get it right so that it's logical. So I'm not just jumping all over the place. So it's got to flow. And then I took all those pieces, all those 50 documents and put them in eight different folders, one for each full. And then I assembled them into a master list for each of those tentacles, a master document. I would write a little bit that would connect one to the other, you know, sort of building it all together and then gluing them together with, with words that sort of made sense. And I built the book that way. And that's how I wrote the, that's how I've written all three of the books. But uh, that, that was what I told Jeff I was going to do with controlled demolition too. I was like, give me, I don't need, I, I don't need it to, we're not going to start on page one and then on page 400 for that one. Um, just give me chunks give me what you're writing and I'll figure out where it goes. And so he would do that. And so, so I drove on it. I drive, I mean, I drove the project because he's running a multi-million dollar business, the dollar vigilante he's running. He's the founder of an Arcapulco. He's running crypto vigilante. Yeah. I mean, he's got his hands full. And, and so that's kind of the thought process is it w- was how we did it. Of course, we're talking about control, right? So I took control <laughs> of the of the writing process, but but not because I didn't trust Jeff with it, just because there is a thing when you've got too many cooks, you know, you don't want to have two directors directing your movie, right? So so that was sort of the the process of of writing that the controlled demolition book. And what was funny was that, well, maybe not funny, but but just it's it's interesting how things play out as far as timing goes because i had it in my head that it would be really great if we could finish this book and get it out in time for feb february 2020 in time for narcopulco cuz you know that's your audience that's his audience it's his people um i had been a speaker there bef- the year before i was going to come back for a second time and um, and it would it just felt like in my mind that's the finish line. Let's get it done then. And we we just couldn't. It, Jeff had a bunch of stuff going on. It just wasn't going to happen. So I said, fine, whatever. We won't debut it there. Thank God we didn't, because three weeks after that we had COVID, and that would have been you know it would you talk about a book that would have been irrelevant almost instantaneously. It would have been that if we didn't have COVID in it. So so luckily we we had the time to sort of analyze that. We got to about August 2020. I sent Jeff a message saying, I don't know, man, I think I've seen enough. I, I know where this is headed. How about you? He said, Yeah, me too. I said, let's I've got I've got COVID stuff. Let's let's put it in and uh and let's wrap this thing up and get it out. Let's just let's let's get it out. Let's see when we can get it out. We got it out the Friday before elections, 2020. So the 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 sol- selection pro- and on Election Tuesday, 2020, it became a number one bestseller in the United States and in Australia. And it just, it kind of took off from there. It, the timing was perfect. So I I, I look, you know, it's, it was a good lesson because in my head, I had a timeline. It was an arbitrary timeline, but it, it was logical. And it made sense. Let's get it out. But this at this event that you throw with all your people, the book with your name on it, my name on it too. But, you know, and doesn't that make sense? Yes, of course, it all makes sense. But it just didn't happen. The universe had other plans for us, Brandon. <laughs> they wanted yeah. they said, eh, there's going to be a curveball in about three weeks. You might want to hang tight and incorporate that into the book. So that's... that's uh, that's one of those things that in retrospect, um, we got lucky on really luck. Are you going to say luck with it? I'm going to go ahead and offer something else. It's this idea of divine timing. And this, this, um, uh, something that I talk about quite a bit actually is this idea of, uh, always adding on to whatever you think is the coolest thing you can ever imagine experiencing in any moment that you could feel that to be that, uh, say, or something better. 
And so sort of that's your surrender into that process is just going, you know what? Yeah, it does make logical sense to release it at this big event because we have a large immediate exposure. But by the universe, which I think is spelt incorrectly to the public, it's Y-O-U-niverse. Uh, it's you doing it, right? So the universe, the Charlie universe, yeah, fuck yeah, uh, knew um, that uh, something better was just down the line there. And so it, you kind of pump the brakes on it energetically a little bit, and then it blows up, dude. It's kind of like, it's like, hang on, just real quick. Uh, wife and I have a story about that. About uh, we wanted to go 2020 again, same in in pandemic. We had a, pl a trip planned because we hadn't been on a vacation in like three, like seven years. We hadn't been anywhere together, so I had a secret road trip planned. We were gonna, I was going to take her out to the desert, like see New Mexico and all this cool shit or whatever. Utah, really specifically Utah, Zion, all of that. We didn't get to go because 2020. This past year, we got invited to Grimerica's contact at the cabin to do or contact in the canyon to do to be a presenter there, and so we just got to go. And it was in Utah, and it ended up being like a way better fucking thing than I could have ever planned on some map quest trip. You know what I mean? Um, it was just way far greater. So just like your experience with this. So then the question is, is what does that teach you about surrender? And what do you think about my idea of adding or something better onto anything you can think of is your best right now? It's it's 100% the right way to go. Because I, you know, the, we we get this in our heads that like, oh, I know exactly how we, this needs to go. Yeah, I we don't know, know shit. We don't go. know shit. And 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 maybe 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 so maybe you do. Maybe I don't know. But but there's there's been plenty of times where I've had these instances where I was like, really glad we didn't go with my idea because my idea sounded right at the time. And then in retrospect, there was something else that was that was a better option for it. So so I'm. Um, yeah, we we kind of we laughed at the at, at that as well. And same with the cover. I was I was having trouble. I was struggling with the cover. And I knew what I wanted it to be. I wanted building seven wrapped in an American flag showing it coming down because I like the idea of being able to look at book covers and know what the book is about just by just in two seconds. Just look at it and you know. And I like the idea, I've always liked the idea of album cover art. You know, how a band gets an opportunity to make something legendary with their album cover. And so to me, the cover of the book is always extremely important. And I I couldn't get it right because I was I wanted to show motion. I wanted to show the motion of it coming down like a controlled demolition. And I had the idea of like a four image film strip it was boom, 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 you know, coming down. And the artist I was working with couldn't get it right I, it, it not because the artist wasn't great but there's only so much room you have on a book cover you've got to get the title in there you got to have your name and you got to, you know and you you're limited on space and he said he finally goes why don't you just use one image and i said no i don't want one image i want it i want the illusion of it coming down and i thought well what if we had it you know maybe we get like the third image you know, one, two, three, four, but we picked that third one where it's about three quarters of the way down and it shows motion. And he said, well, we can do that. And I, and, and, and I can beef up the smoke a little bit. So he beefed up the smoke and in the smoke, he put octopus tentacles that nobody knows about, but they're there. If you, if you look really carefully and then, and then I had, I'll, I'll, I'll tell, you know what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you this for your audience. Cause it's, cause it's you and because it's your audience and because I think you guys would probably like something like this, but I'll give you a hint as to it. I'll, I'll tell you where the Easter egg is. There's an Easter egg on the cover, but you'll never know it. So if you have the book or if you get access to the book, The Controlled Demolition of the American Empire by Jeff Berwick and me, Charlie Robinson, and you get and you get a an app on your phone called Artivive, A-R-T-I-V. I, um, then you, it, it's an augmented reality app. You take the book, you open up the Artivive app and, and it'll activate your camera, aim your camera at the book cover and the book cover cover will come alive. And that was done. That was built by my DMT artist buddy of mine 
who I met at Anarchapulco, who I got matched up with in the, the, the first time at the DMT ceremony. He was my partner, Johnny Dollar. He's a crypto anarchist artist guy who I asked him when, when we got paired up, I go, what do you do? He says, I'm an artist. I go, what kind of art do you do? He goes, po- he goes, post-pop surrealism. I go, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> he goes, well, I have a pic, I have a painting of Mickey Mouse holding a gas canister with a Bitcoin logo on it. And he's just lit a central bank on fire behind him. I was like, oh my God, oh, you and cool. I are going to be friends yeah, like, hey, maybe buddy. forever <laughs> after this. Uh, and and so I stayed in touch with him. And then when it came to the to the cover, I sent it over to him right before we before we released it. And he said, I, he says, "If do you want me to bring it to life? And I said, yeah, man, do your thing. So if you get that Artivive app and you aim it at the book cover, it, it it's wild. It's just wild. So, and I, and I say that just because I think that your audience would probably dig that. You know what I mean? You you know, when you want to see a, a when you want to see, and, and the, the, the ramifications of making a book cover come to life are astounding, right? I mean, there's almost nothing you can't do at that point. So, so we, we did find, we did find a way to show motion on that when you can connect it to a video and show a video of building seven coming down on your book cover. If you've got the secret key, if you've got the, if you've got the cryptography key that makes it all work and what Johnny Dollar does in his art and is that he'll bury um, wallet keys in his paintings and then he'll check it from time to time. He'll put he'll put Bitcoin in this Bitcoin wallet, and then he 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 had a um, a particular uh, painting called "Show Me Your Cookies," and it's got Cookie Monster, and it's got a a, a like a almost like a three dimensional plane of like a like a platform of of a lady walking across this platform, but the platform is all is made of QR codes, and if you scan those QR codes, they take you to different websites that have to do with digital privacy cookies and things like that but cookie monster's got a cookie in his hand and the cookie in his hand also has a qr code on it but you can't really tell that it's a qr code but if you put a a cylinder with a mirrored edge around it on top of that then the qr code ceases to be a blur and becomes a square and if you scan that qr code there's a bitcoin wallet with Bitcoin in it. So he would check that from time to time. And one time he checked it and the, all the Bitcoin was gone. Someone had figured it out. And then he checked it a couple months later and someone had put Bitcoin in it. So now people are cracking his code, which he wanted them to, and giving and taking each other Bitcoin. And it's wild. What a so fucking when, wild thing. That's amazing, I know. dude. So when I meet up with him and he's your DMT partner the first year, at an Arcapulco. And then I see him again, second year. And we talk about the book. I said, the book's coming out. And he says, what are you doing for the cover? I said, it's, I said, we, we, we've got, we've got something that might work. And he said, I can bring it to life for you. And he showed me what he could do. And I just went, please, please do. I told Jeff, Jeff goes, yes. So we didn't tell anyone. That's the thing. There's only like a dozen people that know. So that's why it's kind of a big deal telling you guys. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. We just added a bunch to your audience here. So thank you for that. And I'll find the app and link it below so that you guys can just go ahead and grab it. I need and... to make sure it's still active. Johnny's got to keep, he's got to keep it, keep it going. I haven't checked it in a while. So if, if on the off chance that you check it and it doesn't work, then my apologies, I'll, I'll, I'll send Johnny a, a message and tell him to, to refresh it or keep it keep it going but but it, it's not limited to book covers of course you can make this stuff happen all, all all around you and and i like the idea of hiding messages inside of art yes you know? hugi what do you think about that that's amazing our artist here you know he hides messages in in his art all the time you can see spirit in all of that but it's just you know just a little thumbs up thumbs down what do you think of hiding messages in your art i think that'd be cool you know a little qr code love it he's into it all right Maybe the camera's upside down. He's not into it. Shit, I don't know. This perspective thing is amazing. I think he's into it, though. Uh, but that's, uh, it's fascinating. And, and what a cool fucking thing to do. And for then somebody to figure it out is even cooler. It, I know. It, quite, it makes you think of that hundredth monkey thing, right? If somebody thinks of it, you know, somebody else like around the world or whatever will think about it from that Japan study where they so saw these monkeys washing sweet potatoes and then monkeys 100 miles away started doing the same thing, washing their food, even though they weren't exposed to those monkeys at all. It's a wild phenomena. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. 
that we're not going on dude. to. <laughs> I mean, I think that's an understatement and a half, but, but I, um, I, 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 I have, I'll tell you what I've got, as I've gotten older, I've gotten a little bit better at sort trying to take my hands off the steering wheel and not try to be so in control of these things. We recognize, and I write a lot about the control apparatus that's put in place by these lunatics that want world government and they are control freaks and they are bad people. And so I, I see myself wanting control over some things, not in a, not like I want to run the world type of control. Like I, I want to control, you know, when the book comes out, something is, is, you know, is, is sort of unimportant as that and catch myself going, well, you know, maybe, maybe there is, maybe, maybe I should uh, take my hands off the steering wheel just a little bit and, uh, and let the universe have a say in this. And if it happens at this right time, then it happens. And if it happens later, then I'll be able to sort of reevaluate things and say, well, boy, I mean, we waited a little longer on whatever it was, in this case, a book cover. Um, how did it turn out? Turned out better. How did we, we waited a little bit longer on the book. How'd that turn out? Turned out way better. So sometimes I get ahead of myself and I've got this, you know, I want it now, now, now. And, um, and that, that has, you know, I've had to, I've had to, unlearn some of these habits i think we all do right about uh wanting to to you know thinking like i'm going to tell the universe how to deliver me this thing that i want and it's like do you do you want the thing or do you want it delivered in a particular way because yeah. maybe Either they're not still. always the same <laughs> thing you know like you might just you might get it but you might get it in a roundabout way that you weren't expecting so um it's that genie's lamp thing, like the curse of the genie, right? Yeah, you're going to get this new car, but the second that you get it, you die in it. You know what I'm saying? Like you wreck it immediately. Like that kind of nonsense. That's the dumb shit around here, you know? It's that limiting thing about being free too. And I think it's a mental trap. And so I call bullshit on that psyop right away. Um, it's interesting though what you say about uh, just this place and um, the integration of all of the crazy shit and in your works and in the breakdown of how your works go. You you had a beautiful quote actually in the journals. Thank you for your submission of that. Uh, and you talk about your writing process in the books. And I think it's fascinating, just like we're watching this art process right here before us. And then we ourselves are growing in our consciousness as well. And we're all these ever evolving, kinetic, beautiful beings. Now, there is somebody here in the audience that I'm sure would love to tell you about this when we do our Vibe and A after this, which again, guys, you guys can sign up to join us for these uh, down below at the link. Um, Emily here uh, can tell you that astrology is actually a really cool way to consult your uh, sort of release dates on things, when to take action, when to kind of chill out. You know, astrology is actually fascinating when it comes to that. My wife, Mary, is actually studying it right now on a course that Ksenia Moore has, another guest we have on the show, another friend here. So there are sort of predictable things here-ish, but man, if you want to make the universe laugh, tell it you have a plan, you know, or tell it, you know, you yeah. have control over this and that you think that you, you have it all figured out. This is also where that surrender that you're talking about comes from, man. But this is also where this idea of integrating surrender in a cool way, meaning whatever you think is the best fucking thing for you, right? Add or something better. And it kind of, it honestly, that's your release of control. It's your consent to release of control because you're saying, look, I'd like to go north, right? But let's say that if you're going north in a direct line, you go over mountains and a fucked up river and there's a bear right there, it's going to eat you, right? It's not a, you got to meander a little here, meander a little there, but you'll get to the north that you're, you wanted to get to in the first place with some meandering, right? And so as long as you allow for the meandering, and I think giving yourself permission with this or something better at the end of anything you think is the dopest you could possibly imagine, I think that that's your consent and surrender at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it the universe works in mysterious ways i mean it put me in i look back on all the things that had to happen in order for um whether you know the book in my in my case books or podcasts or everything if i were if if before i had started this i had sat down and written a business plan and and I and I have a business degree. I mean, it's a reasonable thing to write a business. I'm not shitting on business plans or any in any way. But like, if you're starting a business, you really probably should write a business plan in order to do it. But like, I look back on everything that has happened and the connections that have that I've made in the 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 everything that sort of unfolded after I started the process of writing books and doing the podcast or anything. 
none of it would have been in the business plan. Not, not, none of it. I couldn't have, I couldn't have even speculated, you know, it was like, Oh, then I'll meet this person. And that person will say, what you want to come on my radio? You want to come on my show that my other show that I do, I would, you you know, who Richard Serrett is. You met Richard Serrett. No, he does a a show called conspiracy. Now he had me on and uh, he's done several He's a Canadian guy. He's a really nice guy, but he he had me on his show Conspiracy Now to to plug my octopus book, and I go on there and and we had a really great conversation, and uh, we were we were vibing well. We got done recording that. He goes, "That was great." I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I felt the same way." He said, "Would you like to come on my other show that I do? I don't do it often, but I do it once a month on on the weekends." I go, "Yeah, what, what's your other show?" He says, "Well, I I'm the I'm the once a month host of uh, Coast to Coast AM." really? He's like, yeah, yeah, come on, come on up. So I'm like, okay. So if I, if I written in my business plan and then I'll go on coast to coast, then I'll meet somebody who, you know what I mean? It's just, it, dude, you just kind of have to start down that path and then put yourself in a position for good things to happen. Put yourself in a position to meet the right people. Get rid you know, obviously don't, don't engage with, with the, with the bad people that are out there, the people that are trying to submarine you uh, or whatever. And and I really haven't had too much of that. I got to be honest. I've had, I've had extremely positive experiences with people. I have a good relationship with a lot of people in this, whatever you want to call it, alternative media in, in, you know, and not, not everybody in, in that industry is, you know, doing like, outstanding work i mean there are some people i think that are in there that are there to try to take take you down but i just don't have that i don't get that from people i don't have that trip i've had a very very great experience over the last couple years so this i the book came the octopus book came out in 2017 so and i was writing it in 2016 tail in 2015 so um so i my experience has been all very very positive but again it's it's part of this is like Start down that path, give yourself the flexibility to adjust, um, allow yourself to be wrong. If you're wrong, you're wrong. It's fine. You're going to be wrong. And um, if you make a mistake, fix it. Don't be so like, don't get so dug in that you can't like admit when you've when you've gotten something wrong. We're all going to get things wrong. And and go, go at it like as, you know, from a place of humility, like I I recognize, I fully recognize that I don't know what I don't know right now. I'm in this process. I'll learn things as I go. Um, I've, I've always, my philosophy on this has been, you know, because we're talking about topics that are very difficult to get to the bottom of. In some cases, there's government secrecy. They're hidden behind, you know, confidentiality agreements and, and, classifications and things like that. So sometimes it's very hard to get this, this information, but I've always operated with the, from the philosophy of like, I reserve the right to change my mind about whatever I'm talking about. If I am presented with new information that is better than the previous information that I have. So I've got to give myself that flexibility. I don't mean to be wishy-washy or like half-assy, like, oh, I don't really believe this stuff. No, no, no. I do believe what I write. I wouldn't write it if I didn't believe it. But I also understand that I could be wrong and that things could change or that I could have part of the the, the story, but not this one little thing changes everything. And I don't know that because I don't know it yet. It ha- you know, I haven't been, it hasn't been brought to my attention. And once the, I find out about that, oh, that thing that I believed and I said, actually, it's a little different than, than what I, got to be flexible. I've got to give myself that because if I don't and I dig in on something that that I'm wrong about, I don't think that's the right way to do it. I think you have to kind of say like I'm going to be wrong about some things. 100%. Like we're talking about very difficult information to gather correctly. And we're also going up against the best liars in the world the disinformation agencies and, and things like that. So, so there's a concerted effort to, for you to get things wrong when they give you 97% truth and 3% lies. And you, you're not really sure about where that lie is. And it's all kind of mixed in with this information, disinformation sausage, you know, it's all blended together. And you're like, Oh, I mean, I know it's in there. I just don't know. You know, so 
that that's that's something that I that's just a philosophy that I took going into this. Like I've I'm you know get it right, but in the event that you get it wrong, don't compound the problem by sticking with your philo- your your thesis if it's actually wrong. Just say I got it wrong. I, I think people can. I think people can deal with that as long as they know you're coming from the right place. Is I don't think everybody expects you to get like bat a thousand with this stuff, but but as long as they know that your intention is to get it right, and as long as they know that you you are humble enough to recognize that you don't know it all, and the then 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 I think that people will give you a break if you if you get this stuff wrong from time to time. And of course, I'm not trying to get it wrong, but. It, and I'm not wrong about the Bushes and the Clintons and the Rockefeller. I'm not wrong about that. I'm 100% right that those people are the worst on the planet. And so, and I can prove it. So, so a lot of this stuff you can, you know, you can prove, but, but to have the humility going into it, to recognize that like on this journey, you're going to, you, you, you may, you might've written a book in 2017, but you, you're going to know more in 20. 2024 than you than you knew um you know than you knew when you started that's 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 something that you've got to sort of that's that's my mentality for this so um and as a result of that i have brought into my orbit other people that feel similarly and and i've kept a lot of like the grifters and scammers out of my world Dude, you've nailed it. Um, and this idea of temporary truths is where I'm at with this place, man. This is the one belief, the B word that I do attach to is the idea of temporary truths. The idea of what I know now will change with new information and that new information will come. Those are two certain things for me. And so the idea that I believe anything at any given point other than that is um, unscalable to me. I just, I don't even have attachments to the fact that that coffee cup sitting there will stay in its solid form in reality, or that a lizard hand won't come through a portal and grab it away from, you know, I'm f- uh, fine, you know, I'm cool. Uh, it's it's this idea though that this stable reality uh, is a stable reality and that you know your best in everything from the perspective you have now. And but this Charlie, that's true surrender, man. You you like you said, you can see what's bullshit here, and that's one of my favorite things about this reality, whatever it is, is that it points out the obvious bullshit that's going on. I was on Emily's show earlier, and that's something that we talked about is how clear whatever's going on here is trying to fool you. And it's very clear. And folks like you are the ones that point this out for us, man. You're the one that's sitting here going, hey, uh, here's how they're fucking you over. And all you have to do is not put your energy into it. And that's how you move away from it. Not here's how they're fucking you over. So be scared about that and make sure you tune in next week so I can tell you all about that and make sure you buy the new book because it's in there, how they're fucking you. And I'm not going to tell you other than that. Like that's a different thing, right? But it's all mixed up in the same message. So it's like this dryer, like a picture, like a dryer at a you know laundromat or whatever. There's truth in there, but it's like, you got to be the red sock in the white ones. You know, you got to be the one that uh, is in there, but you have the effect, but you're unnoticed, man. You know, it's this interesting because in it, you do rise at a level, right? But it is through this humility, through this understanding that, hey, I don't know everything right now. And the things that I'm growing and building on, I, I'm pretty solid about this. I know what's not going on, but I'm still going to explore the what's going on in the realm of possibilities because that's where expansion's at. It's a beautiful way to put it, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all, look, we're all trying to figure it out. And in fact, so the the framework of the, I know we're kind of back, jumping back and forth between the Octopus book and the Controlled Demolition book, but in the Octopus book, the format of it, I think really sort of appealed to a lot of people because I have a ton of quotes in it, 700 quotes from 500 different people that had a front row seat to some of these world changing events, you know, the Rockefellers and Rothschilds and Clintons and Bushes and all the people that you would expect to be in there are all in there, of course. But then there's the, then there's the, the the people that see things from another perspective um there's the the joe rogan bill hicks george carlin component right the comedians that can see things from an angle and laugh at the absurdity of it all and um but there is one there is one quote that stands out above above them all and it was from uh, stephen bassett the executive director of paradigm research group which is normally a ufo group and he was talking about you know you're born into this world and in and, and it's a you're given a, a giant jigsaw puzzle with a 
10,000 pieces and you, your, your mission is to put it together. And if you do, it'll be the, a, a true picture of the world that you live in. It will be the absolute truth. And he says, so you start on this journey. I'm paraphrasing his, his, his quote, but it's cause it's like four paragraphs long, but it's like, you start on this journey and you think you're out there, you know, your, your mission is to put this together and it's all good good for you, but there's a problem. The government that you're living under has made a decision for political reasons to, to interfere with your truth process and that they have taken a bunch of pieces of your puzzle out and thrown them away. And then they've taken a bunch of pieces from somebody else's puzzle and thrown them in your box. And here you are trying to put all this together, thinking that you're going to make this, this picture of reality. And he says, it, you can never really get there. And he said that is a that is a an impossible situation, and it's very effective to serve the state. You know, it, it it helps to obscure this process. So I you know I think about this a lot. Where like, you know, here I am with with my jigsaw puzzle, and and I've got my box, and I've you know I've got all the edge pieces figured out, but like I need help in the middle. And somebody will will come to me, and they'll say, you know, are you familiar with uh, this group? Uh, you know, are you familiar with Le Circle? the circle in French, right? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, John Brisson come to me, a guy who's, uh, has a, runs a, you can get his sub stack. We, uh, uh, we've read the documents sub stack, John Brisson. And he says, Hey, have you ever heard of Lacer Kell? I said, what is this? And so he's the one that he explains this to me. Oh, it's a right leaning think tank. That's like Bilderberg on steroids. And it's these people that were in the Reagan administration and the H.W. Bush administration and take a look at this group of lunatics and you start, you go, well, oh, I didn't have that piece. I didn't know. I didn't even know about this. So, so we've all got pieces and, and we're helping out to build this big, massive puzzle. And when, when Stephen, ba when I read that quote from Stephen Bassett, I was like, that's going in the book. It, it, it is, it is one of my favorite quotes. Might even be my favorite one in there because it just, it, 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 it kind of reminds you like, oh yeah, like we're assuming we have all the pieces, Brandon. Like we're assuming that this that that we're operating in good faith. That somebody has it wants us to figure out this mystery. No, they they want us to never figure this stuff out. <laughs> you know, if we figure it out, it's over for them. So they they definitely would take pieces out of your puzzle. It's like, oh well, who would they would never do that? Yes, 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 they would. So again, part of this had been. Coming to a realization that the government that you live on is di under your, you know the government you live under, whether it's here in the United States for us or or wherever you are, your government is run by criminals. It it is it is there to oppress you and suppress you and limit you in any way, shape, form that they can, because it, the last thing they want is for you to recognize I don't need you guys. You guys are totally obsolete. You're irrelevant to me. Because then they go away. But if you're fearful and you're scared and you depend on their currency and you depend on their media and you then you then you become dependent on them and they they have a re reason to stay around. And when you go to conferences like in Arcapulco, what you find is that you know there isn't really a good re good reason for the governments to to be around. They don't do anything. They don't help. They're there were, the people I'm meeting at, at the conferences are all doing things outside, building parallel structures, you know, saying, well, you know, I'm not fix the education system in America. Why? Why would I fix the education? The, the American government doesn't want to fix the education system. They're not even, they're trying to break it. Why would I get in there and try and fix it? I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to build a different education system. I don't give a shit if any of those people come over here. I want my family, my friends, and these people that understand. I want them to go through the Gatto Institute, David Rodriguez, and you know, talk talk about unschooling and homeschooling and building these programs that are scalable that you can put in any community. So, you know, instead of like trying to fix what's currently broken in a system that's meant to be broken, why don't we just build something better? Why don't we build a better mousetrap and then peel off the people that are tired of dealing with the existing structure into our little paradigm. That's, that's the way I, I feel about it. That's why I had, you know, had these connections at Anarchapulco. That's why I think because I've been so vocal about it over the years about how I leave that conference feeling is the way I do that. I think that's the reason why they, they said, would you want to host it and MC it this year? Because I'm, 
because I understand the power of getting around like-minded people. And I understand that when you get there, you feel inspired and that it is a force multiplier and that it is not just like, I'm going to leave with good ideas, but I'm going to leave with good ideas and a network of people that I can reach out to international in scope, definitely connected to me ideologically and way smarter. So that's the, that's the group that I have found myself interacting with once a year, February, Acapulco. Right. And, um, you know, so so I'll be there. You know, Brand, I'm leaving in two weeks from today to to go, and I'll be there for the week. And it's a different. It's a different topic. You know, it's like Monday's fuck the government day. I mean, not officially, but it might might as well be. <laughs> two is uh, d- day two is crypto. Day three is health and uh, Vitaly Dodd. Uh, day four is parallel structures. Day five is all the COVID doctors are in there. You know, I mean, so it's like every day there's like, what's the problem? Okay, good. Let's bring in all the, the the smartest people we can know that we know that know how to f- get around this problem, fix the problem, or get outside of it. Have them come in, hammer down that on on Monday, Tuesday. Totally different topic, totally different speakers, totally different problems. Let's get to the bottom of this, and you just find out you, you want talk about expanding reality notebook. Take your notebook down there. Come on. <laughs> Holy shit! You'll come back with so much information. So it it in and then you will have the you will feel the same way that i feel every time i leave this event this this paradox of i am so glad i came and i am so glad i'm around these people and i learned a lot and i had a great time i interacted and i expanded my network of people i learned about things i would have never learned about but oh god you know i just i got to go back to reality now and that's a bit of a letdown, you know, when you, when you, you, so, so you, but you got to take the, you know, you, you know, that going in, you know, you can't stay. I, I, I can't stay, but a lot of people do stay, I should say. And I should, I should put a little asterisk like, you know, you can't stay if, if in my situation, I can't stay right now, but I keep meeting these people that I, I say, where are you from? And they say, well, I'm originally from Canada, but now I live in Mexico. Or I'm originally from Australia, but now I live in Mexico. Or I used to live in Southern California, but now I live in Puerto Vallarta. Or now I live in Acapulco. I never left. Went home, sold all my stuff, came back and <laughs> moved here. So so again, it's about like having finding like a good group of people that you connect with and getting outside of the system and finding some different ways to look at the world and finding people that have thought about this and, and bring different skills to the table. And boy, I just feel so inspired every time I leave. Uh, an event like that, you feel like you, you, you're like, all right, we're going to be, we're going to be okay. You know, we're going to be okay. There's some, there's some smart people that are on it that are working on, on doing things a little bit different. And I am extremely grateful for that. If you said everything you did with the opposite energy in a German accent, you would be Klaus Schwab and Davos. You know, you're talking about the anti-Davos and this World Economic Forum that you've got just in a sunny tropical spot rather than this cold, mountainous, you know, Davos uh, riddled, with, <laughs> yeah, riddled with fucking <clears throat> like evil layers, you know, in the hills and shit like that. They didn't really fly in there. They have an underground train that takes them, you know, it's, and they flew the UFOs like uh, Eric Hollerbacher does his uh, Klaus Schwab Jr. It's fucking great. Uh, th- this whole thing, you are the opposite. Um, you're the handsome, good-looking leader of an awesome place in a tropical thing. And then you've got Klaus Schwab, you know what I mean? So you too. I don't know. I would like to see you in one we of those little... We both have the bald head, though. That is that That's is what I'm saying. It's like that. But it, it, uh, my wife, she'll talk to you in the uh, vibe day here in a little bit. But she thinks you look like somebody else. I can't. I don't know who it is, but she'll tell you. And it's a, it's a compliment. So, um, But it is this idea that, you know, but I would like to see you in that one piece uh, that he has with his... Um, on the beach there in Acapulco, though, if you wore that and then we put them side by side as like a calendar or well, something, that would be Well, you know, great. <laughs> I, there's still time. Yeah, plenty there's of time. You're going time. in two weeks. There's plenty of time to find one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the beach is a very special place at Acapulco because because that's where we that's where we uh, that's where we had the DMT experience. I was going to bring it up, but I was going to wait for you too. go ahead, sir. The, is this on the um, parallel structures day? That's what I was going to ask. Is do you do the DMT where you see the, on the parallel structures day? Yeah. Well, here's the thing: when a narc poco plans it, it it's a different day for for it. So it's like uh, you know Thursday night or or the when or Tuesday night or whatever. One night ayahuasca is Monday night. You know, I don't know whatever the schedule is. So so in my particular case, the first 
the t- the first two times I I went down, uh, I did the the ayahuasca one night. That was rough, man. That was that was hardcore. And what was interesting is that like it wasn't like a bunch of like Grateful Dead, you know, people twirling in the parking lot of a Dead concert or anything like that. Like you might expect, like oh, we're all gonna go, we're all gonna go do some drugs, okay? It was it was seventy year olds. 70 year old couples that were there, you know, people in their thirties, people in their twenties, like all different age ranges. I bet there are a couple guys that came in from Korea. They, they did the, uh, peyote session with me, like it, all different types of age ranges and, and whatnot for the, for the formal sessions. But this last year was when I ran back, I ran into Johnny dollar again, back to my crypto anarchist artist, buddy. It's, and he said, um, we've got the smokable DMT this time, but it's not on the menu for, for the, you know, for, for the event. It's, it's a you and me situation because now he and I have done this, you know, we've sort of bonded over the years and everything. And that he, that we did at the end of the whole week after everything was done, that was the Friday night on the beach in Mexico, you know, nobody's around do that late night. And that is, um, Man, that's like every now and then you have these. Exp- I've had, in in my experiences, there's been a couple of times that you're in the middle of doing something and you recognize I'm never going to forget about this. This is going to be one of the, one of them was like I remember with with buddies uh, back in '98 we we went to Maui and rented Harley's and did the road to Hana on Harleys with just like baseball hats on backwards and sunglasses. And we just did, you know, and it's like a six hour thing. And while I was doing it, I was recognizing this is one of the coolest things I've ever done. I'll never forget this. And the same was with this DMT experiment experience, uh, down on the, on the beach with Johnny dollar, because it was just the two of us. Nobody, you know, nobody's around. Nobody's going to see it hard to explain it. And you know, you get yourself in these situations where I just remember thinking, you know, you know, if I had, a, if I had a million dollars in my bank account at that moment, I couldn't have bought that experience. You know, it, it was, and it be, it was like a revelation. It's like experiences over things experiences over things man i i mean what did i come back did i come back with a t-shirt you know i went to an arcapulco and all i got was a shitty t-shirt you know what i mean like things absolutely i, I didn't i, didn't come, I don't <laughs> come back from the event with things i come back with a bunch of memories that they can never take from me that are stored in my mind that are things that i'm going to draw on for the rest of my life the experiences that i'll never forget i mean to see the framework of the universe to see the grid in a way that I had never even considered before. I, I remember I got done. We were, this was a process of a multi-hour process of us on the beach. And, and I remember after one of the, the sessions that we did looking over at Johnny and saying, like, how am I supposed to go back to, reality fucking dmv this. or go get your groceries or <laughs> oh, talk to your mom <laughs> oh, a, what am i gonna do am i gonna get angry at some guy in traffic now after i've seen that the fabric of the universe is completely unre- <laughs> uh, unlike anything i've ever seen you know what i mean I'm, I'm ready to fight some asshole in the parking lot over stealing my parking spot it's like what am i doing <laughs> you gives know you perspective I mean? right so, it was a great perspective checker and in it and it really sort of puts you in this you know, in this a, a reminder, especially coming out of a Western society like we're in, where it's like, you've got to get a job and you've got to do this and you got to have the right car and you got to have the right. And we just get so focused on that stuff. And I, and I, I say that as somebody that's a hundred percent guilty of that at, at, at points in my life, a hundred percent guilty of trying to chase the money and do that. Boy, you know what it got me? It got me divorced. You know, it got me unhappy. He put me through the worst period of my life. I was chasing the money. It wasn't until I changed my goals that it that it changed my life. I I stopped caring about. Now, no, let me let me just be clear. I mean, 
you've got to pay your bills. I'm not, I'm not saying quit your job and, you know, do nothing or anything, but I'm, I'm just the, the priority list of like, well, okay, I get it. You got enough money to take care of all your bills. Like, do you need the, the, the Lamborghini? Is it really that important? You know? So, so having, and, you, and, and some people come to this realization sooner than others. And, and maybe I'm grateful that I came to it when I did, but it probably would have been better if I'd come to it sooner, but whatever you're, you're here now, you're at the party when you get there. And, and, and now I'm, I'm looking at this, this whole, you know, the way I view the world in, in terms of like, Oh, they want us to be fighting over money. They fight over money. They, that's important to them. They're powerful psychopaths that, that care about this stuff. What if you're not a powerful psychopath? Does it matter to you? Is, it's not um it's not that it's not in my top 10 list of things that I'm I'm really after. And once that happens, then you start to your your life starts to unfold in a different way. And and I've been really and almost like a science project, just watching it over the last couple of years as to where things go. And like, you know, I I these people come into my life that I would have never met if I'd been doing something else. And um my normie job that I hated, I hated it. It was so soul crushing and, and I'm a bad employee. I'm a terrible boss and I'm a terrible employee. Great. I don't want to tell people what to do. So like, I'm not a good boss in that regard. And I also don't like people telling me what to do. So I'm a shitty employee. So I'm like, okay, I need to find something that, <laughs> so that eliminates 95% of stuff out there. So now what? Well, the 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 writing of books and things like that, you know, I'm no nobody's my boss on that, except for the reader. So I I I've I've had it's changed my life to to change my priorities. But I couldn't have been re I you know I wasn't ready to understand that earlier, and I wouldn't have if somebody could have told me you know somebody gets out of a DeLorean my my old self grabs my young self and says you you need to do this this and this I'd be like get the out of here with that nonsense you know i'm not listening to you so you you come to it when you're ready and everybody's everybody gets their their own pace their own speed that's why I, i've had brandon like like lately you know how we we look at people and we go like covid like how do you not see it how do you not see what's going on you want to just shake people you know and i've and 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 I still feel that way about a lot of things. Like you just want to be like, really? You were wearing I saw a guy a couple of days ago wearing a mask in his car by himself. And I just go, Oh, sir, you were broken. You need you, I, you know, I feel like I want to shake you. But like I, I've also now come to the realization that like everybody's at their own, they're all on a different schedule. You come to this information when you come to it. The people that are here in this in this call. Are, are at a place in their life where they are ready and willing to explore the world and sort of a from a different angle. But you all know you weren't always there. You know, you were still buying things instead of experiences. And, and, and that has, you have to go through it. You have to have the experiences that change your life that make you think, oh man, this is all bullshit. I'm doing it wrong. And you have to go through that. And if you do, and when you do, and you come out the other side into a new sort of way of looking at the world. I feel much better. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of the world. I, when you've seen the grid of the simulation through DMT, I felt like a I felt like a, a character in a video game. So that's the thing. And we'll probably lead this into our conversation, which if you guys want to see uh, the rest of the completion of Hughie's art here, which check the show description for the link for the video version of this. If you've just been listening to this on audio, there's been a video version associated with this, which does have some art going on. It's beautiful and amazing. And it's being created as we're uh, organically with this conversation inspired by just this amazing guest, Charlie Robinson here. 
And so we're going to be uh, going into uh, the second part of this, our vibe and a with the members. If you guys would like to sign up and not only finish this conversation with us, but join us for the ones in the future, do so at the link below. But before we get into that, because I've got, and when we get into that, actually, some things I'm going to ask you over there is, you know, like the, who puts the douche in fiduciary? You know, we're going to talk about some banking. Uh, also, everybody, I know some folks here have some questions and things like that. We're going to go over your chart probably live here. I bet Emily will want to pull that up for us. So we can do that and talk about some stuff like that. So join us again uh, down there for the link guys but charlie robinson end us on on a high note end us on what gets you out of bed every morning and um i have a lot of things though to ask you in the q a uh, after this but please what gets you out of bed every morning what gives you hope what keeps you moving brother oh i'm very i'm very optimistic even in spite of all of the negativity that we see in the world if especially if you if you go through if you look at mainstream media all this i'm very optimistic it feels like a change is coming it feels like a fourth turning i i recognize i fully recognize and, and i'm not going to this isn't going to ruin the end of the controlled demolition book, but, but in that book, we talk about towards the end, the, the Banda Aceh, Indonesia earthquake and tsunami of December 26, 2004, where the people went out to the, the ocean, they went to the beach, you know, the next morning they, they woke up and they went to the beach and there was no water, like everything was gone. And, and everything, and they didn't know what to make of it. They didn't know, they'd never seen this. There's no water where there's supposed to be water. What do we do? And people would wander out, you know, as far as they could. Just they'd never seen anything quite like it. But the people that recognized what that meant, the people that had experience and the animals instinctively, they knew that to get to higher ground. They knew that if that water went away, it was coming back. It was coming back in a wave. So look, I, I'm I'm optimistic in that, I think a lot of people are opening their eyes and they recognize that there is a problem. And as they say, the first step is recognizing that you have a problem. And so for those that have recognized that we have a problem and that they're getting, they're getting to higher ground, there's a ton of opportunity that's going to be available to us in the future. After this, we're going to go through some not so great stuff in the next couple of years. I think it's going to be rough, but for those of us that saw it coming, that positioned ourselves accordingly, that got out of the brunt of like the tidal wave. We, we, you can't save everybody. You know, you can reach out to people that, that are close to you that will listen to you, but I am, I'm, you know, I'm, I've, I've got to prioritize my energy and my time. And I, I can't, I'm not going to argue with you that, you know, about why there's no water. You need to be in at, at higher ground. And once you are, and after this controlled demolition that of the American empire that Berwick and I talk about, there's going to be massive opportunities and you're going to be able to, you're going to see the world differently. And for those of us that are paying attention, you're going to, um, you, you'll make it out of, out of this in, uh, in much better shape. And, um, and I think you'll be better off for having gone through it. And on the other side, I think we have brighter days. And I, cause listen, I wouldn't be doing this if I thought that it was, if I were, you know, black pilled. I mean, I, I fully recognize that there are some issues out there, but I, I, I definitely see, I'm optimistic about how we come out of this because evil just has a, a short self shelf life. It can't last. These people are so diabolical, but the mask is off and people are starting to see it. The normies are starting to ask questions. And, and that's a good thing. So for those of us that have been kind of aware of this for a while, you know, talk to people that will listen to you. For those that want to argue with you, prioritize your time, get out of their way. Don't, don't bother. Let them figure it out on their, on their own. Can't save everybody, but um, we're going to be going into some, some interesting times. So um, as the Chinese, as the Chinese fortune says, right, may you live in inter interesting times. Well, we're in interesting times. Enjoy the ride, you know, because it'll all be too short and you'll look back on your life at some point and say, oh, I wish I'd done X, Y, and Z. Well, do those things, you know, don't, don't die with a bunch of regrets. You know, we're, 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 we're far too evolved for that. You've got the capacity to recognize, you know, things you want to do. You want to go travel the world. You want to go somewhere, set your intention, make a plan for that or something better, right? And, and, and watch what happens, you know, watch how the, how, you know, David Icke talks about the totalitarian tiptoe in the, in this negative way, how you can't go from A to Z. So you go from A to B and B to C and C to D you do incrementally to, towards totalitarian. 
Well, there's an inverse of that too, right? And you can't you can't free yourself from this slavery, this mental slavery, all at once. You know, sometimes you have to go from A to B and B to C and just trust that it's going to open up for you, that, that you may not know how to get there. But get as far as you can go and something else will develop. You know, your headlights can only see so far in the dark, but, it, but you can drive, you can drive 10 hours in the middle of the night and get somewhere just by seeing a hundred yards in front of you and then another hundred yards in, and then another. So. So if, uh, that's 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 how I've sort of approached my life right now. I don't know how to get to the finish line, but I trust that the path will illuminate itself if I start on that, in that direction. Just want to take a moment here and thank Charlie Robinson for coming by and being our special guest for that super special live recording of this episode. If you guys would like to join us for any of those in the future, as well as to recap this and see the vibe in A, as well as the completion of Hughie's drawing, then check the link in the show description, guys. Check the tiers over there uh, to make sure you're signing up for the right one. But love for you to come hang out with us. This has been an absolute blast and continue to amaze and delight, especially with the introduction of our creative expansion artist series, which I'm grateful is our brother Hughie here. So definitely check him out down in the show description here, as well as all the other ways to find Charlie. And again, if y'all want to fucking join us for some of these, go check the link in the show description. I'd love to get to know you better and to further expand your reality with you here. Also want to mention our befriending Bigfoot event, which you can reach out to us for more information on at expandingrealityexcursions at gmail.com. This is going to be taking place May 15th through 20th of this great year, 2024, and it is going to be taking place in the beautiful Blairsville, Georgia area. We have a 25 acre ranch out there that we got, man, it's, it's awesome. Anyway, so check the, uh, Expanding reality excursions at gmail.com to be able to participate in that. Looking forward to seeing all of you and expanding your realities in person. Now, thank you all again so much for listening and just watching and being amazing and crushing it at life in general. Going out into this crazy, bizarre ass fucking realm, whatever the shit this thing is, and pick up a piece of litter, you might as well get the fuck out of the left hand lane. You got somebody behind you because that's just what we do. And of course, go out into this beautiful, wild, bat shit, crazy place and just be good to one another. Thank y'all so much for watching, listening, and just being general badasses all around. You know, just all around there. You're crushing it at life if you're tuned into this thing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll see you next time.